Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saver CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. Well, our friends at Vectric have just introduced VCAR Pro 11, and we're gonna take a look at it, and I'm gonna show you some of the neat new features that they've included. I've been a VCAR Pro user for a long, long time, and it's one of my favorite softwares, and I think it's the, the best value there is on CNC router software. You know, some companies bring out a new version and all they did was change the shape of the buttons, but now Vectric's not like that. And so what I want to do with this video is actually go through VCAR Pro 11, look at some of the new features, and kind of figure out which ones make sense for me and which ones they don't. You know, there's some things they add are for for people that do different things than what we do, but I found four things I really, really liked, and I wanted to explain them to you in a little more detail. All right, the first new feature that they that I really want to look at is using multiple materials in the same file. Now, the demonstration they used on a video at Vectric uh, basically was a sign thing, but and that's not really practical for what I do, but boy, we just did a video that back earlier in the year that it sort of really helped. And that's when we made the chess table because we basically had a thick piece of walnut, then we did 3D inlays using V-Carve, and then we made a maple plug and glued it together. And I had to use a lot of separate drawings to do that, but here's how you would do it here. Okay, that's, that's the cutouts, all right? And then that's the outline of the walnut board. Let's look at our material size. So we're set up at 28 by 28. It's an inch and a half thick. The machine better spool boards the top. The lower left is the corner. All right, perfect. Now, um, then if I wanted to toolpath that, what I would do is go toolpath. And I actually saved the toolpaths I used before. So I should be able to just to import that. And there they are. So the toolpaths are there. So all I really have to do is open that up. I use the same settings, and I just hold the shift key down and select all these. And finally, these last ones. Then I hit calculate. And there they are. So if we look at the simulation in 3D, that's what's going to happen. Okay, that's the clearance, and then here's the V-bit. All right, so that's the first part we need. So that looks great. So let's save that file. So we'll say five, file save. Okay, now what we're ready to do is to make the maple plug, and I'm gonna do it off the same drawing, and let me show you how. So I come over there, sheet, I'm gonna go add new, and then if I edit, I can edit that, whoops, I can edit that. Okay, and I'm gonna change the size of it because my maple piece doesn't have to be so big. So let's go 20 by 20. So think about this as just a separate part you're making, separate setup. And let's go 0.75 because it doesn't take that thick a piece. Everything else stays the same. Okay, perfect. Now what I wanna do is double click this first sheet. Whoops. And now what I wanna do is select those, right click and say copy to sheet two. And there's my geometry, and let's double click that, and then let's select that and tell it to center it. So we'll go to drawing, and we'll center that. Okay, there's our parts. Now, I need another tool path here, so what I'm gonna do is create a rectangle, and let's make that, uh, let's make it 21 by 21. Hit apply, and then we'll take that and we'll center that, okay. And you'll see what we need to do that next. All right. The other thing I need to do is these have to be mirrored because the way it works, it's, it's flipped. So let's take those and just mirror in place. Horizontally will be fine. doesn't matter. Okay. So now that works great. So now I've got a separate setup here, and this is maple. So these are the maple pieces. And their tool pass is slightly different, but let's go back up here to our tool pass. I happen to have saved the tool pass from the project before, so I can just say load it, and it's called maple plug. Now this time, I select all this geometry. Whoops, I better open that first. Yep, and hit calculate. And that gives me my two tool paths. So let me show you what's gonna happen. 
Uh, so the first thing is going to do the clearing cuts. And you see what it did is it got rid of all the material but left those standing up. And then let's do that. And there's, so there's our plug. So you can see with just one simple drawing, I was able to do two complete material different size parts. And this is a huge, huge feature, I think, in VCARV 11. Another major change in version 11 of VCAR Pro is how the machine configurations are managed. So it's similar to how it was before, but they've added some features. So let's look at that. So in my case, I actually have a 23 in my garage. So the speeds and feeds are going to be different for that and the post processor that I need. And same thing, here's an IS that I use in the shop and, and also an ISM and a 5 horse. But each of those basically have different feed rates. So let's take the IS. Now, there's no post processor selected here. Now, uh, let's talk about this a little bit. Before, let's close this. Before, when I went to File and Open Application Data Folder, I could see the posts. So here's, here's the posts. These are all the posts. They, it, let me say, it used to be all the posts. They're not there. There's a database here. So instead of this huge list of posts that I could select and say, okay, I want these three in my post P file, it's not there. All right, so uh, what has to happen? Well, we have to figure, figure that out. So here's how you do that. So let's go back to our machine configuration. And all I want are the posts that I need for that machine. So I'm going to add this. And that machine uses, let's see, that'll be an ATC post. Got to pick the right one. Okay, shop saber, it's not a fourth that. ATC arcs, inches. Should be it right there. So that's the one I want. But the problem is uh, it doesn't show up later. So what I got to do is delete that and let's do it a different way. Let's pick it again. This is where people have gotten confused. It's this part right here. Let's see. Let's find it. All right. ATC. There it is. I'm going to say, whoops, I want the inch one. That's it, that's it, okay. I'm going to say select, except before I do that, I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to hit customize. Now you see what happens when I hit customize and I select it. Perfect. Let's apply that. Now let's go back and look at what happened. So we go back here, and now in my, this doesn't change, but when I go back to the my post, there's my file. So by, when you select that post and then you, you customize it, then it'll put it over here in that folder. And that's been, been kind of confusing for people because what's in the My Post folder determines when you get rid of output code, the list of posts that you see over here. So when I hit that, that determines the list of posts right here. And the, the older version wasn't like that, so they created that whole list into a database. So... That's really one of the main reasons that, that uh, I really like it because it's given us a lot more power in controlling different machines and different tools and different materials and different feed rates. Uh, but there's a little change here that's confusing sometimes if you're used to the way it was done before. You know, another feature in VCAR Pro 11 I really like has to do with slicing. And the reason, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because a lot of times people buy machines, maybe they do cabinets, and they want to branch out and do other things. And, and the slicing thing lets you do some really unique 3D stuff. Now, let me give you an example. On the screen here, I've got a dome, and this could be anything. It could be any kind of 3D model, but if we look at the side of it, you know, it's, too, it's taller than the material. So let's look at what I've got here. I've set this up with a piece of material that's basically one inch thick. So what I want to do is take this, and I want to slice it. So I go to the modeling tab, right here, hit slice. And it's going to bring this in automatically with thickness because that's how thick my material is. So what it's done is created slices. And let's go to that. We can see it. You can see them. As I pick each one, there's a slice, there's a slice, and there's a slice. Now, one of the things you want to watch is this top slice. This one will be fine, but sometimes you can actually have problems with uh, if it's too thin, you can create something that that's maybe has a hole in it. So you can kind of judge it that way. Now, I've, I'm happy with that. I've told it how I want it sliced up. Uh, I'm going to go slice model, and it creates drawings, and I'll show you what they look like. 
If we go back over here, we turn that off, and what we have are these slices. So there's, as you see what's happening, we're taking slices off of there. Okay. So each of those are actually going to be uh, one inch thick. So what I can do, what I really want to do, let's, let's turn this off and do it simply. Okay, what I've got is I've got a slice here, and I've also got a boundary ring. I need those together. I click that again. Let's just drag it over here out of the way. All right, so there's the first one. Same thing here. Here's the, here's the 3D model part, and then I need, there's a boundary at the top and the bottom. Those are grouped together, by the way, automatically. Drag this over. Okay, we'll go to the next slice. Pick that, hold the shift key down, pick the model. Click one more time, we'll drag that out. And the easiest way is to do it one at a time and then you've got control of it. Okay, there's that one, I may have to zoom in a little, pick that, and then the model. Click one more time to let me drag it. And finally, we've got one more slice. And we'll pick that, hold the shift key down, and there's the final slice. Click it one more time, whoops. Click it one more time there. So there's our other slice. Now if we look at that in 3D, turn these slices on and there they are. Now I've created the slices. There's five slices that's necessary. When I machine those and stack them together, I have my 3D object that I started with. And we'll move that over slightly. Get that where it's not overlapped. So basically what I did is I took this surface here and then sliced it in. Now I can tool in one inch thick material, I can tool path all these, take those and put them back together with glue and I've got this. So think about the capability that brings you with a router to do really, really unusual things. In fact, I, one, at one of the shows one time I saw a five foot long shark that was a full body 3D shark and it was cut that way. So that's one of the things I like that they, they made much easier in version 11 of VCAR Pro. The final new feature I want to look at in VCAR Pro 11 is actually has to do with scaling and it seems really simple. But if you do a lot of this, it's nice. Now, let's say, for instance, I wanted to change this flange, and I would go over here and scale it, and I say, okay, I want that to be 12 inches instead. That's fine, but now the holes are the wrong size. All right, so let's undo that. Okay, let's do this. Let's go ahead, let's go back over here. I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna, in fact, let's just do two of those. And I'm gonna say, scale items individually, and I want those two to be a 0.75. Hit apply, and it's that simple. And it really, instead of having to redraw everything and scale things down, within a shape there, it lets me do that. So um, it's a really nice feature, and it's, it makes drawing easier. So I think that's a nice feature they've actually added into VCAR Pro 11. Our friends over at Vetric did a great job on this new update to VCAR Pro they call version 11. Now they added a lot of different features, you know some of them I don't use. So in this video I tried to select four things that I thought were really strong features that would help me every day and of course justify upgrading to version 11 if you have a previous version. Well I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.